interesting. I have these slabs here that I've previously made. And these slabs are nice and thin. Be able to get some really nice thin slabs out of there. And we're going to go ahead and make some different pendants and stuff, different shapes that we're going to cut, carve, polish, file, and buff into submission. So we have the basic shapes of this all started here, and that's just going to help me follow the lines. I'm going to go to the outside of the line and consider the thickness of this dark edge, the beveling down um, on both sides. And uh, yeah, try and capture the translucency of this stone. So out to the saw probably is the next part. That's what we got done last night. It actually takes way longer than what you'd think once you start getting into it. But got these roughed out and I am happy with it. They are thin, they are translucent, they are beautiful. This is probably the most risky shape that I made. It worked out. Put mineral oil on them and um, yeah, I'm gonna head back out to the cutter some more. So. Let's go do that.
So we're just uh, using the Dremel. The flex shaft on here that goes back to the main body allows me to get in here and snake around, keep the electric motor out of the water so it's safe. Using a real uh, long skinny bit here, which is the grit, the uh, diamond grit right at the end and submerged in water with a soft bottom underneath it so it kills the vibrations in the stone and keeps it cold. Okay, sometime later, and this is where we were at. All of them were able to be drilled with success and got the holes all pretty much where I wanted them, even with pebbles. And yeah, you can see the designs start to take shape. So this is one of the first ones where I started carving out the little edges on it, basically making it into a little T-Rex claw or something. But yeah, beveling all the edges, sharpening them like little knife blades and rounding the other parts. Then we'll go to the filing, the smooth, the Dremel marks down, and then we'll and then the buffing. And, uh, and then they'll be ready for their little loops and ropes and to be worn. So on we go. I like to work in water like this because submerging the tip keeps it going, it lasts a long time, it keeps it really cold and it just seems to clean out the hole, you can get this perfect vortex going on. I can feel the pressure, that's one of the main things when I, I have little drill presses, I have several that the Dremel mounts in and for doing beadwork and other stuff like that they work really well. But for stones that are thin like this, literally you can see me drilling with my finger behind it because it's not that type of drill that can hurt your finger unless you pressed really hard for a long time and you'd get burnt first from the friction. Um, so anyhow, I like to be able to feel the degrees of force that I'm putting in with my own physical body and allows me to judge much easier how much pressure I'm putting on the different delicate parts of the stone, um, the different shapes of, of things like this that we have carved out. I want to be able to support their skinny parts, all of that. So sometimes uh, having your hands and your fingers and your flesh connected to it is just way better to, to give you more of a delicate feel. So what I decided to do was go ahead and drill through all of these at once because I figured once I had the curve on it and I was in that mode, might as well just production line all of the cutouts. So I went ahead and did that and this is where we're at. Okay, so this is what we got done on the Dremel phase. This is how many pieces I have finished. Um, it's about two thirds of them. So I still have, well, maybe maybe only half of the carving because I have all of those pebbles that I'm going to do deeper leaps into and that's going to be a lot of a material removing but these pieces are all drilled they all have their necklace holes and they have all been rounded on their edges beveled and or taken to their blade points you can see it's rough because uh, a Dremel is a rotating tool. It's really hard to do smooth stuff. So what I do now 
is I bring my little file kit in and I'll be doing the same thing um, working in water the same water setup but with files and the files um, allow me to do long smooth strokes across it and and smooth out all of these rough marks that are still left on here but the Dremel is perfect for basic shaping so we've done a rough shape and a cutout you could say and then now we're doing the shaping down on each thing which means taking it to its I spent most of my time balancing out like if that was a knife blade in there the two edges making sure that the line of it the slant of it came back equal distances on both sides that it was that it was equally thinned out, that the uh, ends were rounded down, you're left with a bunch of relief cut marks from, that's how I do these type of shapes on a, on a saw, is you have to do a bunch of relief cuts and then cut across it. So you're really left with a bunch of rough stuff and now we're down to the more secondary shaping. So now we do a smooth out with the files and then a sanding after that semi by hand and then an actual buffing so those are the stages i'm already very happy so yeah those are what we have so far Whew. look at that one you can see through it even with no light behind it see as we uh as we shape these down, as they get smaller, then they become ever more translucent. This isn't the best backlighting, it's more of a side lighting, but it's a good way to catch the color. So anyhow, that's what I'm going to be doing now. A bunch of filing off through the night. And uh, yeah, kind of like whittling away on a cold winter's evening. Just going to put on a nice movie and see how many of these we get through. Love how that one turned out. Oh, you can see the green. Man, good stuff, okay. I'm excited. Okay, reality check. It is one in the morning, it is three hours later, and this is what I've accomplished. Getting this one smoothed down to the point that it's at, and there are still just a few warbles. And getting this one smoothed down, this one took a lot, because I'm trying to make like a T-Rex claw, you know, like a Tyrannosaurus or a dragon looking claw type of thing and um oh anytime that you have like a crescent or a sickle curve or something like that going on between the knife blade and the curve it's so hard to get all these these tools in there so this is the um the stage that i'm at i'm going to continue through so we have some that still need to be roughed by the dremel i have some that need to still be filed obviously and all I'm trying to do during each one of these stages, my parameters, is just trying to make sure that with the Dremel that can take off the most, the easiest, that I've taken off as much material as I can with it before I move on. Same thing with the filing stage. And then with the sanding, we need to do the rest of the corrections and altering and finish work. And then after that, it is what it is. The buffing doesn't change anything and each one of those tools goes down in its ability um, if i tried to shape this out of a rock with a file or sandpaper it'd take a million years that's why i use the saw first then the dremel then the file then the sandpaper 
And a simple thing like this is going to end up taking so many hours when you start way back thinking about taking the slab out of there and then shaping the slab into this and then the grinding down and it's just a lot of hours so you better love doing it for the art so that's where we're at and um and i do love it it's a green. wow the green in these is just amazing to me my one of my so far top three materials to work with okay yeah so here is basically all the stages laid out as I go back and I did decide to do a bunch more of these. So these are the ones that are finished and they have a nice buff on them and fully shaped and all the way done. Those are done. These should have been done except for during the buffing stage. There's little things that I can't really show you probably on this camera. But little spots where the, the bit on the Dremel had skipped around and different stuff like that. And it only shows up in buffing. And so all you really have to do is go back and sand those areas that you don't like. With the two highest, uh, or the two fine, with the two finest sandpapers that you used. And then rebuff those areas. So on each of these there's just a little fix area that I want to do. And because the rest of it's all buffed out, that's pretty easy because um, it's easy to see where the few last little problems are. And as you're sanding on it and you go out to the buffer, only those areas where you have sanded on it will need buffing. And they'll be apparent because they'll be all scuffed up. So these are ones that are about to be... Some of them have been filed on. A lot of them are about to be sanded on and go through those grades and then finally to the buffing. Um, that's what we're working on here. So there's the the files, and then I have the two different grits of sandpaper, which I take off with their sticky backs, and I put on this plastic tube. It sticks really well, and that gives me a harder backing to be able to put a little more force into it. And then my ultra fine, and then I move out to the buffing wheel. And this is the little station that you've seen. And shaping the last few out, so there's a, here's the last rough, you can see the difference here all at once, pretty rough, and then they get shaped as smooth as I can, because every bit that you do with the Dremel, you don't have to do with the file, same thing as you go to the files, everything that you do with the file, you don't have to do with the sandpaper, yada yada yada. So we're all the way to where we should be finished here, except for have to go back and fix some last Mars in it. And then everything moves ahead, moves ahead until they're all done. And this is now eight or nine days later, honestly, working on it whenever it seems sane to do that. And I have everything else caught up as most projects dictate. So that's what we're doing. I'll show you these hopefully finished up. So we've done the, all the filing, rough shaping, and such on these and then use the different grits of sandpaper to take it down to this stage so in the buffing stage on the wheel with the buffing compounds really all of your issues should be sorted out because all you're going to do is take away just the thinnest layer of rock to shine it up and um you know trying to fix your mistakes there is just really always a losing battle so 100 percent Try and sort all your stuff out in the filing and the sanding. And I get down to this layer, you can see the little hematite inclusions in this reflecting back up at us. And then now it's to the buffing Next wheel stage. So all we did was skip a thousand hours of me fast forwarding uh, different filings and different sandpaper to show you where we are. And now I'm headed out to the shop.
so here is uh, the results of about three hours of standing at that buffing wheel. Um, I'm real happy with the results. I got it down to just a shine shine. Um, and I say we go ahead and look at these backlit. And I'm going to go ahead and put the strings on them because we had one more than this already. And um, I dropped it right as I was finishing because uh, the buffing compound kind of has like a wax to it. And it slipped out of my fingers and broke its tip. So there went an almost finished piece. An endless hour. So let's go ahead and backlight these and look at them one by one because now that they are all cleaned up like this and shined up, their translucence has just increased like a hundred percent. So let's do that now. Okay, we are done. That was three hours of polishing and we have 14 pendants. We can go through each one of these and take a closer look. I have to take pictures because they're all going up on the shop. And uh, so four or five pictures of each of those stills and then some videos for Instagram and stuff like that. And I can get you some close-ups here too. So we want to do backlighting and all of that. So let's take a closer look at these.
deep, deep greens, and then lit light apples, blues, aquas. This serpent stone, this green gold, new jade, green stone, from all around the circle of fire, its birth long ago in the center of the ocean, at the bottom where all of the surface is made, where it boils up, where it's shoved out and the ocean pushes back down and combined they make this creature that then slides, slithers across the bottom of the depths, eventually reaching land like some goliath lurking below and it dives, it dives deep, deep, deep down into the fires of the earth. But it's not completely devoured. It's a creature of fire itself, a dragon of the mountains, of the deeps of the ocean, and the water in itself melts the very earth around it. And it begins slithering upwards through all of the rock next to the volcanoes as lava and steam force their way to the surface in a giant circle that extends around the world, so too does the serpent rise, take on its many properties, assume its many changes and its many forms, stretch itself into fibers, into crystals of all shapes, compress, remelt again, polish itself against itself on its long journey up to the surface. In that we have found these treasures, these gems, these clear pieces of the ocean and the fire itself combined to make a stone shaped into the dragon's claws, into the serpent's fang, into the talon, into the raptor. Every time I work on a stone, it demands its own shape. It has its own idea already of what it wants to be. I try to conform it. It ends up telling me what it was supposed to become. This is the best that I could do with these. These are what they wanted to be. And as close as I could get them to the pictures that came into my mind. Thank you for joining me on this little process, this little journey of creativity. It's been a month or so in the making to get this short little film all completely finished and these pieces done. Countless hours went into them, and I hope that wherever they end up, they bring their owners lots of good grace. Still, I appreciate you sticking with me this far into the video if you're still here, and I'm just going to go ahead and finish it out showing the rest of the details of these, and I hope wherever you are, you're having a good day, good night, good evening. And I will see you next time on the quest for details.